Hey, what is going on, guys? In this video today, we're going to be going over five Fortnite tips that I wish I knew earlier. I saw another YouTuber by the name of Gearzy make a video just like this, and I thought it was a really cool idea for something that I could do on my channel. These tips are going to be kind of situational and for the most part will also be pretty simple to where anyone can use them, but at the same time they should also hopefully contain some information that's new and helpful to a lot of players. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So the first tip that I want to cover in this video is the best way to break and replace an opponent's walls if you play on controller. I personally believe that this method is the best combination of speed, simplicity, and consistency. I'm guessing this will probably also work on PC as well, but I've only done it on controller, so that's what I'm going to be referring to in this tip. So I'm not going to lie to you guys and say that this method I'm about to show you works 100% of the time. Especially if you have a high ping, even with this method, you may still struggle to consistently break and replace enemy walls. But like I said earlier, this method is really simple and places the wall almost instantly, so it's going to give you your best possible chance. Alright, so for this method to work, you need to first make sure that your swing pickaxe button is the same as your place wall button. For about 99% of players, this won't be an issue since they're both defaultly set to R2 slash RT, but if for some reason you've tampered with either of those binds, you're either going to have to change them back to the same thing, or this method simply won't work. So the first step is that you're going to need to make the wall weak enough to where it can be destroyed with a single pickaxe swing. Each pickaxe swing does 75 structure damage, so no matter what material the wall is, you need to make sure it has 75 health or under. Once you have the wall under 75 health, the method is as simple as this. You swing your pickaxe to destroy the wall, but instead of just pressing R2 slash RT, which is what most people would normally do, you want to hold that button down. As you're holding down RT slash R2, the second your pickaxe makes contact with the wall, you want to double tap B slash circle as fast as you can. What this does is that since you're still holding down RT slash R2 from swinging your pickaxe to break the wall, when you press B slash circle which pulls out your building menu, it'll register that you're holding down RT and instantly place a wall. The reason why you tap B slash circle twice is because the second time will switch from your building menu back to your pickaxe, and that makes it much easier to then switch to a weapon. This method is so awesome because it's a whole button click faster than the way controller players normally try to replace walls, and like I said, it's also so simple and consistent. The timing of it is a little awkward because sometimes you'll click B slash circle too early and it won't register you hitting the wall, but that isn't any kind of major problem and all it should take is a few minutes in creative or playground mode to get the timing down perfectly. So here's a quick clip of me doing it to replace my friend's wall who's turbo building the entire time and has approximately a 10 ping. So not as low as mine, but still very very low. The next tip on our list is a really interesting and fairly simple way to get into an enemy's one by one. Much like you just saw with the wall replace method, this is used to kill a player repeatedly turbo building a wall to keep you outside of their box. For this specific tip, I feel like it'll be easier to show you the clip of the method first and then briefly explain what happened even though it's fairly self explanatory. So pay attention to what's happening here because it's only about 15 seconds long. So here's a basic summary of how that method works. 
you place a ramp directly connecting to the wall that you want to jump through. I know it doesn't make a ton of sense, but trust me, that part is necessary. Then, as you saw in the clip, it's as simple as sprinting, jumping forward, and swinging your pickaxe to break the wall in one smooth motion. Now, the timing here is really important, so you probably want to practice it at least a little. And just like any other method of beating turbo building, ping is definitely going to play a factor here. But just like the wall replace method, I feel like the best part of this tip is the fact that it's pretty simple and fairly consistent. For our next tip, we have a really easy way to travel considerably faster when using a slipstream. Most people will enter a slipstream and then just hold down their forward movement button, thinking that's the fastest they can go. But it's actually much faster if you consistently bob in and out of the slipstream while still going forward. This is actually hinted at in the patch notes at the beginning of Season 9, so it's not like it's some super secret thing. But I personally just found out about this a few days ago, and I don't see many other people doing it either. So here's a clip where I go at a normal speed first, and then show you the bobbing in and out method, which you can tell is much faster. Moving on, tip number 4 is about one of the new points of interest in Season 9, Neo Tilted. It's one of the most popular towns in the entire game, so even if you don't plan on landing there, you'll probably end up in the town fairly frequently when playing any kind of match. Neo Tilted is, in my opinion, the most confusing town to navigate in all of Fortnite. It's a brand new town that contains a ton of super complicated multi-level buildings, with so many random entrances, exits, and staircases. Because of this, Epic added a cool little feature where in a lot of the most confusing buildings, the doors in the building are color-coded to indicate what's behind them. A green door indicates that opening it will take you outside or to a staircase which leads outside and a blue or non-colored door means you'll still be inside the building when you open it and go through it. This isn't the case for every building, as I believe they only bothered to do it for the three most confusing ones, which are the three buildings right next to each other on the part of Tilted closest to Loot Lake, but here's a clip showing how helpful this tip can really be. The final tip for this video involves the Shadow Bomb item in Fortnite. Shadow Bombs are incredibly powerful, especially for safe rotation slash a get out of jail free card in super chaotic situations. For competitive Fortnite specifically, they're pretty much just as good if not better than launch pads or rift to goes in end games. As you guys should know by now, whenever you use a Shadow Bomb in Fortnite, you can't build or break any structures. So let's say you're turtled up in a 1x1 one one and you want to use a Shadow Bomb to either rotate or escape. Super common situation there. Since you can't break walls once you're in Shadow Form, what a lot of people will do in this situation is break the wall before they throw the Shadow Bomb. This definitely works, but you're obviously running the risk of being shot as soon as you break the wall. So the super simple counter to this is to make a door before using the Shadow Bomb. Since it's a closed door at first, you'll still be totally safe, and then once you enter Shadow Form, you can open the door to escape and rotate. Super simple, yet definitely very useful in a lot of situations. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you watched the entire thing, be sure to let me know with a comment down the comment section below. Which tip in this video did you either find the most helpful, or you just didn't already know?
And if you knew all of them, you can also let me know that as well. Be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, do whatever the heck you want, and I will catch you guys next time.